All right, I'm starting to think that the lock lab is turning into Herd Lock Central because every time I pick one of these, an old one, one of you guys finds a different model and sends it in. This one, uh, very old Herd, no marking on it other than the logo on the front and the back. There's no stamping or dates or anything like that. This is not a crinkle finish. This is a uh, patina. Yeah, that's it. Patina. Uh, quite rusted. This thing has had a pretty hard life. Um, a lot of you guys suggested that these are shimmable, and I can tell you uh, this one is not. And I'll show you why in a minute. When I first got this lock, you can probably tell I've been doing some cleaning on it. I mean, literally, you would take, uh, you could take it and bump it on the desk, and it would pop open. Uh, you could take it and tap it, and you could very easily wrap this open. And my conclusion was there's something gummed up on the inside. So I shot a whole bunch of this down the side of there, almost a whole can. And this stuff is, as you can see, the black stuff is still dripping out of here. So since I got most of the black stuff out, now it seems to lock up a lot better. Uh, it did come with a key, a beautiful bidding on this thing. Check that out. It doesn't get any better than that. Unfortunately, I mean, it is a beautiful old herd key, but unfortunately, it isn't the right key for this lock. So... <laughs> that's, that's the way it goes. A lot of black stuff still coming out of there. Uh, a lot of you guys also said we could shim it, and I've broken or bent a bunch of shims. There's a couple here. Uh, you can see they're all damaged. This one uh, is not. There's a couple places that you can slide a shim in. There's the outer part of the core here. It is possible to slide a shim in up until that point. So between the 10 o'clock and the 2 o'clock position, you, the shim won't pass it. So it doesn't matter because that's actually the outer part of the lock. We really need to shim the inner core, the part that turns. So the shear line would be right there. And I, I don't know if it's because this lock is just, in, just filthy or if it's got such good tolerances. I can just get it to slide in there. Well, I'm not going to ruin another one. Well, there's a double. No wonder. It does slide in there, but you can see all these shims that it goes down about one pin and then it pinches. And then I end up, by putting my finger on the top and pushing, I end up bending them. So that's why that is not working. So we're forced to pick it. So let's see if we can't do that. Um, now, a lot of you guys say uh, that these can be picked in the clockwise or the counterclockwise. Let's find out. Let's try to pick it. See, the cord does turn a little bit. You can see it's a little bit flexible there. So what I'm going to do is just put really heavy tension. Well, let me slide the pick in first. Heavy tension and just see if something binds. And it does. Okay, we got binding going that way. Let's try the other way. It binds that way as well. So this one looks like it can be picked in either direction. Let's try to pick it clockwise since all my previous ones have picked counterclockwise let's try something a little different so all the way in i'm going to put light tension because these are pretty good locks and just feel around see if we can find a binder first time through i got no binder so i'm going to tighten up a little bit more and pin five is binding we got to click on him Pin three, we'll click. Okay, so everybody stopped binding all of a sudden. Go back to pin three and give them a little more. Now let's see if that changed the game a little bit. Okay, I must have overset pin three, so let's recock it. I'm not even sure this is going to work, guys, because of all the junk that came out of there, it's quite possible some of these pins are just permanently seized up. All right, so again, light tension. That's pin five, I think. Nice click. There's three. That was five again, two again,
And there we go. Come out of there. It's really tight. Really tight. All right, I think the problem with this was just really super gummed up. I really wish that this would work. You know, if we, let's try one thing real quick. Oh, anyway, here's why it will not shim. You'll notice there's no cutout on this part of the shackle here, perfectly round. And when you look down the side of there, if you can see past all that black, greasy, gunky stuff, there's no locking mechanism at all on this side. So that means the only locking mechanism must be on this side of the shackle. There must be a cutout. You can see there's nothing here. So it's got to be below the lock body. So somewhere in here is probably a cutout. So when we turn this around, it's on the inside, and we shove it down. The locking mechanism is probably buried so deep inside of there that none of these shims even have a chance of reaching that far down in there. That's why they're not shimmable from the top. All right, let's try one thing here real quick. Let's take, um, I'm going to use the nylon end of this thing and just give it a couple of whacks. And what I'm trying to do is I'm guessing that this might, might be the right key and, and something is just gooped up in there. Nope. No dice. Well, Marcus, I don't know what to tell you. I know why you couldn't pick it, and I know why the key didn't work. It's the wrong one. But uh, a little bit of cleaning up, it does, the, the lock does function. We just need to find the right key for it. If I had a blank, I'd certainly give a shot at impressioning this thing. Anyway, guys, there you go. A really old herd lock for Marcus. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe. Stay legal. Marcus, thank you for sending in this little piece of history. Thanks, guys.